it's Alice and I am here with our biggest book haul ever. So we're doing this book haul a little bit differently. We know how many books we've hauled, we'll get to that in just a second, um, it's too many. So what we're going to do, because I've been trying to do a book buying ban and it hasn't been happening, because where we get all of our books so cheaply it doesn't feel as though we really have that much of a problem. We do. Um, so what we're going to do is, down here is going to be a ticking counter of the amount of books that we hauled. Down here is going to be a ticking counter of how much it has cost us. Just for this month. Keep that in mind, this is only books that we have acquired in May. So that is in 31 days. And the embarrassing thing is, we have acquired 320 books in May. So we've been acquiring more than 10 books a day. It's not possible to read that many. Admittedly, quite a lot of these are baby books. But it's difficult to even read that many baby books with them each day because they like reading the same stories over and over and over again. So if we get them three books, we might manage to get through two of them in a month because they like reading the first one over and over again. So we need to try and control our spending a little bit more and I'm thinking this might be a good way of shaming ourselves into doing it while also showing off all the fancy books that we got. So without further ado, Let's do a 320 book book haul and hope that it's not going to take like over an hour. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with the books that we got for free. So we have done a couple of jumble trails this month and people have been giving books away free. We have a book box that is local to us where you can just take as many books as you want. We donated like 200 books to them a couple of months ago. So we just take a few here and there. We've got quite a few from them this month. Um, and we've had some gifts from people. So a few free books. So we will tick up the counter and we will tick up the money. Enjoy. So I'll start off with possibly the most exciting stack of the month and that's the fact that I won the entire YA book prize shortlist on a competition on Instagram. Um, so it was for signing up to their mailing list. You could win a set of the YA 10. In case you missed it, we did do a reading vlog of all of these books. We read most of them through either NetGalley or through the library app. So we only owned a couple of them beforehand, but we wanted to buy some of them, particularly Hold Back to the Tide and Melt My Heart because they're amazing. Um, but we also chose our own winner and we did a few videos on it. So I'll link those down in the description in case you'd like to hear more about these books. But these are Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury, Loveless by Alice Oseman, A Snowfall of Silver by Laura Wood, Melt My Heart by Bethany Rutter, Wranglestone by Darren Charlton, Eight Pieces of Silver by Patrice Lawrence, and The Stars Were Burning Brightly by Danielle Joando, Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, King Warriors by Alex Wheatle, and The Great Garden by Meg Rossoff. So a huge thank you to the Way Book Prize team for sending these my way, and that's our first 10 books free. Starting off well. We then have a few books that we got from our local uh, Jumble Trails free, including In the Time We Lost by Carrie Hope Fletcher, the Calligraphy Source Book, A Book of Lettering by Jean K. Robertson. Glorious Rock Bottom by Bryony Gordon, who is the author of The Wrong Knickers. Uh, have it, haven't read it yet, now have another non-fiction of hers that I probably won't pick up for a while. <laughs> Confessions of a Conjurer by Darren Brown. This is Sean's book. And Barbecue Bible. Again, Sean's book. So that's another five books. We still spent nothing. More books, and these are the ones from the local free book box. Ever Dark by Abby Elphinstone. We Just Clicked by Annabelle. I Owe You One by Sophie Kinsella and Can You Keep a Secret by Sophie Kinsella. We've read a couple of Sophie Kinsella's novels together and we really liked them and these match the kind of brightly coloured cover style that we've got so we thought we'd pick them up and give these a go as well. Girl Online on Tour by Zoe Sugg. I have read this series, I thought the third one was the best one, I didn't really like the other two. Sean owned the first and the third and he's still interested in reading the series so we grabbed this so he can read them. I don't think he's going to enjoy them so I think we will end up unhauling them but at least he can read them now. We Know You Know by Erin Kelly. The Shelf by Helly Acton. I had this one on my library want to borrow list because it's like Big Brother but six women get dumped and then they all get put in a house and they have to compete in trials to be the one that like gets their boyfriend back. Seems a little bit wild, seems like a lot of fun and also just such a cute cover and this is a 2021 release so I'm surprised that was in the free box. If You Could Go Anywhere by Paige Toon. 
This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins, which I nearly bought in a charity shop, and then I got free two days later. The Secretary by Renee Knight, who is the author of Disclaimer. I haven't read that, but I own it. And I own this too. American Sniper by Chris Kyle. We actually unhauled this <laughs> a few months ago and Sean hadn't read it and he said he had no interest in it. Sees it in the free book box and is like, I am interested in it again. So there's a good chance this is our copy that we just rehauled, but hopefully he'll actually read it this time because I don't think he will or we'll just end up unholding it again next year. <laughs> the Real Mrs. Brown by Brendan O'Carroll. This is embarrassing because we got this one for my granddad and it wasn't until we got back to his house afterwards that we realised he already had it. So we will be unholding this one because I'm not interested in Mrs. Brown but we've still hauled it this month and it's taking up space here for a little while at least. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This is again like a really recent release so I was surprised that it was in the free book box. It has been eaten a little bit by the babies which is a shame but it has really cool fox end papers and it has a little fox on my cover so we might just end up recycling the dust jacket and keeping it naked on the shelf um but i've heard really good things about this one and i really like richard oseman's house of games so i'm probably gonna like his novel and tim peak ask an astronaut this is again sean's book he likes space he likes astronauts this ticks all those boxes really <laughs> so that's another 14 books that were all free so we are on 29 books and we have so not spent a penny. This is going well. I'm actually, this is going to completely backfire. I'm not going to spend guilty about how much we spent at all, am I? <sighs> this is good. So now we'll move on to some books that I was sent from publishers. And these are Acre Noir and then Bury Our Dead with Song by Makoma Wa Ngui. And these are both sent to me by Cassava Republic. And then Bloody Foreigners by Neil Humphreys, which was sent to us by Muswell Press. And this one is out in July. So we're gonna be reading this one next month. We are reading Unbury Our Dead with Song this month because it's out on June 22nd. 32 books, still no money spent. I have one gift and this is Green Day, American Idiots and the New Punk Explosion by Bev Myers. This was my friend James's. He was unhauling it. He didn't want it anymore. And I like Green Day. So thank you, James. Day three. And now we get onto the free baby books that we've acquired. There's quite a lot of these, so I'm literally just gonna show you the title and then move on. Topsy and Tim Move House by Jean and Gareth Adamson. Magical Unicorn and Playful Tiger and Always Hug a Unicorn. Who Goes Moo? That's Not My Kitten. Where's Bear by Emily Gravitt. Little Miss Birthday by Roger Hargreaves and Mr. Happy and Mr. Bump Loses His Memory, also by Roger Hargreaves. Incy Wincy Spider, which has a cool spider face that you can finger puppet with and I like it. Peppa Pig, My Mummy, Duffy Kitten by Rod Campbell. That's not my teddy. A My Little Pony Busy Book, which is a book that then like pops open and you have My Little Pony figures in it so that they can like parade through the story. This was outside somebody's house free, so it doesn't have all the figures with it, but it's got some of them and Sophia already loves it. As well as All by Valerie Thomas and Corky Paul, Winnie and Winter, Happy Birthday Winnie, Winnie's New Computer, Winnie's Magic Wand, Winnie's Sign Carpet, Winnie the Witch, Winnie's Amazing Pumpkin, Winnie at the Seaside, Winnie's Midnight Dragon, and Winnie Flies Again. And last but not least for our free children's books, Thomas and the Green Controller. Sure really likes the Winnie the Witch books, which is why we gathered all of these. <laughs> and that was 26 free children's books. So now Alice has to start doing maths. It was going well until this point. I could do it mentally and now there's too many and can't count that much in my head. So that puts us up onto 59 books. All free. Nice. So now let's move on and do them based off of how much we spent. I'll start adding up the money that we've spent and it will pop up on the screen. So let's do this. For 25 pence each. Little Red Train Green Lights by Benedict Blathwaite. Faster Faster Little Red Train. Little Red Train to the Rescue and The Runaway Train. Those are all by Benedict Blathwaite. 63 books, one pound spent. For 30 pence, Lies Sleeping by Ben Aronovich. This is part of the Rivers of London series. I own, I think the first five already. Um, doesn't seem to have a list. Yeah, it does have a list. I've got either the first five or the first four. Um, this is book seven. So I probably should have started them before I bought this, but it was 30p, so. I'll read them eventually. For 40 pence, we have Nightfall by Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg. Sean really likes Isaac Asimov. Grabbed it. For 50 pence each, we got Wool by Hugh Howie. 
heard amazing things about this trilogy. It's a dystopian. There are few who have been lucky enough to survive in a community existing in a giant underground silo. It's the first in a book or a series of three. I think the others are dust and sand, but the covers of these are just beautiful. And 50p. We also got Later by Stephen King. This is another 2021 release. Like this is the newest Stephen King novel. It came out like two months ago and it was in a charity shop for 50p. How am I supposed to say no to that? I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about it because it's like one of his pulp novels and I haven't read any of those yet. I really don't like the cover, but 50p. And then those ones were in a shop where if you bought two, you got one free. So technically Written in Blood by Chris Carter is a free book. It would have been 50p, but those three together cost me a pound. Um, this is quite late in the Robert Hunter series. Um, I kind of got it for mum because we got her the signed edition with the sprayed edges. I know she's not going to read it because she won't want to ruin it. So when she eventually gets to that book in the series and wants to pick it up, I'll be like, oh, you can borrow my paperback copy. It's really beat up already. Like it's a little bit stained. Don't worry about it. And then she'll actually read the book without feeling guilty about ruining her signed edition. So kind of for that, but also because I only wanted to buy two and you got a free one. I'm not going to turn down a free book. Apparently I should learn how to do that. <laughs> we then have books that cost us either 49 or 50p. I'm just counting them all as 50p because it's easier. Valis by Philip K. Dick, which is part of the Sci-Fi Masterworks series. Sean is collecting these, so he picked it up. Trick or Treat by Richard Tannersley Cusick. Um, this is part of the Point Horror series. I know that Shelley from Tales of Yesterday is still doing her Point Horror book club and I've always wanted to join in. I don't have many Point Horror books, but I found this one for 50p. So I pick it up and then hopefully they'll read it soon. Oh, it's really shiny. <laughs> Born at Midnight by CC Hunter. This had been on my Goodreads Want to Read list for the longest time, but I didn't think it was ever published in the UK. This is an American paperback. Um, but I found it at a jumble trail for 50p. I'm still vaguely interested in the story, so I thought I'd pick it up. And again, really shiny. And then we have three of the Warrior Cats books by Erin Hunter. We have Warriors, Field Guide, Secrets of the Clans. Code of the Clans and Battles of the Clans, all also 50p each. Um, they're kind of meant to be non-fiction based around the like Warrior Cats lore, so it's a bit more of the backstory and the history of the clans. If you haven't read Warrior Cats, you have no idea what I'm going on about, but basically like cats who are wild, they organise themselves into clans, there's battles and stuff. Introduction to fantasy for young readers, and I really loved them, and Sean enjoyed the first one when we read it together. So now we have these. Also at 50 pence each we have four of the books in the Animal Arc series by Lucy Daniels. This is Lamb in the Laundry, Donkey on the Doorstep, Fawn in the Forest and Guinea Pig in the Garden. I loved these when I was little. I think the babies will enjoy them when we read them together and I didn't own any of these ones. So, and they're in really, really good condition considering these were published like late 90s, I think. Um, really good condition, much better condition than the copies that I owned already. And we also have Aliens Love Pantacles and Dinosaurs Love Underpants by Claire Friedman and Ben Court. We have been reading Pirates Love Underpants to death, um, which actually I haven't hauled yet, so you'll see that in just a second, but we managed to get these two a couple of days ago, so we're gonna read these to death as well. And last but not least of our 50 pence books, we have Bumpus Jumpus Dinosaur Rumpus by Tony Mitten and Guy Parker Rees. I need to do some math. Math break. So but my account, we're currently on 81 books at £9.20. You can't really say fairer than that, can you? <laughs> we'll then move on to our 60 pence book, which was Manhattan in Reverse by Peter F. Hamilton. Um, I've never read any of Peter F. Hamilton's work. I've seen, I think it's Emily Fox recommended him. Um, this is short stories and I like short story collections and it was a hardback for 60p. We then should have four books that were 80 pence each, but we've lost one of them already because the babies love it. Um, but these were all by Julia Donaldson and Lydia Monks. The one that we were missing was The Singing Mermaid. Um, but we also got Princess Mirabelle and the Dragon Pox, Sugar Lump and the Unicorn, and The Princess and the Wizard. Um, I can already recommend all of these because we've read all of these multiple times. Um, the babies already loved what the ladybird heard, so had to grab these as well. Then we get into the books that cost us a pound each of which we have Pirates of Underpants by Claire Freeman and Ben Court. The Innocent Story by Nikki Singer, which is actually signed. It was a pound in a charity shop and it's signed. And I mentioned this in my, oh God, I can't remember if it was my 25 favorites video. Um, it was somewhere around my 25th birthday. I will link it up. Um, but I said I wanted to get hold of a copy of this and reread it because I read this when I was in primary school. And now I have a signed hardback for a pound. That's fate. 
we have the Guess How Much I Love You All Year Round Little Library, which is Guess How Much I Love You in the Autumn, Winter, Spring and Summer. And these are all by Sam McBratney. I never knew who'd written Guess How Much I Love You before. And also for a pound each, we have A Boy Called Christmas and Father Christmas and Me by Matt Haig. We read these at Christmas time and we really enjoyed them, but we read them through the library app. So all of the illustrations split across like three or four of the library app pages. So you couldn't really get absorbed into the story. So we'd been talking about repurchasing these to reread them when the babies are a bit older and found them for a pound each. So we've just got to try and get the girl called Christmas. The girl who saved Christmas. That's fine. 94 books for £21. We've then got five books from charity shops that cost £1.25 each. The Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks, which is the first book in the Shannara trilogy. Um, this has been adapted on Netflix, Sean's really interested in it. It was £1.25. Okay. The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This is a little bit beaten up, but we wanted a copy of it at some point. Um, we might replace it with a better edition if we love it, but I'm thinking that we're gonna love it, so we're probably gonna end up with a nicer edition with these. Um, have heard amazing things like this from Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin, um, and I just wanna finally read some Sophie Anderson. We have an advanced reader copy of Hideous Beauty by William Hussey. Um, wasn't expecting to find this in a charity shop, but William Hussey's The Outrage has recently been released, and I was talking to Sean and saying that I really regretted not picking this one up sooner because I've heard really good things about it, and then literally the next day we found this in the charity shop, so again £1.25. And then we also got Mirror Mirror by Jen Kalanita and Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. These are part of the Disney Twisted Tales series. One is Snow White, one is Mulan. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about these. I've heard Gavin talk about them. I've heard Hayley from Hayley and Bookland talk about them. And I've never been interested in picking them up but I've never seen them for £1.25 in a charity shop before. So I kind of said to Sean, like, I'm not sure whether I'll enjoy them or not. I like retellings, they're not my favourites, but I have heard amazing things about Elizabeth Lim's writing because she is the author of the Spin the Dawn duology and Six Crimson Cranes, which is coming out next month. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go. I will probably read that one first and then if I enjoy it, I'll try Mirror Mirror um, and then possibly get the rest of the books. But starting off with these two giving them a go. And we only have one book at £1.35 and that is the Innocent Smoothie Recipe Book. We like Innocent Smoothies, we like recipe books. So we're up to 100 books for you and we've currently spent £28.60. And now you think about the fact that this is a 320 book book haul, it's gonna end up getting more expensive and I am frightened. <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So we'll move on to books that are £1.50 each and these are City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. Yes, I already own this, but somebody in the Book Box Sherlock's group was saying that they were trying to get hold of these editions. So I've picked this up, but I'm gonna message them and see if I can send it to them because it's in brand new condition and it was on pound 50. And if they really want them, then it's also really beautiful. Kind of like these editions on the ones I've got. The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. This I gave five stars to. More people need to read it, um, but I've never bought it because I'm not a huge fan of the UK cover. I will ask Sean if he can edit the US cover up there and you will see why I prefer the US cover. But £1.50 and I know I'm gonna want to reread this one, so I got it. We then have The Radleys by Matt Haig. Absolutely love Matt Haig's writing. Have read How to Stop Time and The Midnight Library, love them both. I have a really beat up ex-library copy of The Radleys that I got for like 10p five years ago. And this edition matches the other Matt Haig novels that we own. So we got this one and Really, really cute cover. I really like the, the new designs on these ones. We have Flawed by, oh God, Sarah Barnard, Holly Bourne, Tanya Byrne, Non Pratt, Melinda Salisbury, Lisa Williamson, and Eleanor Wood. So this is a collaboration between seven of the biggest names in UKYA. So it's like in an elevator, I think. There's seven people stuck in a lift and each author does a different viewpoint. One of them is the narrator, so I think maybe there's six people stuck in the lift and there's the narrator. Um, I have an advanced copy of this that I bought, I paid shipping for from someone on Twitter, but I also want a finished copy because I love Sarah Barnard, I love Holly Bourne, I love Melinda Salisbury, I love Lisa Williamson. I haven't read anything by Tanya Byrne or Eleanor Wood yet, and I've really read a couple of non pratt short stories, but I'm sure that this is gonna end up being one of my favorite books. So I'm happy having two copies of it. 
and if I hate it then I can just unhaul them both. It's fine. Sean told me to get that one. I was gonna leave that one and Sean was like, no, you'll regret it if you don't get it. So it's Sean's fault that we have two copies of that. Don't blame me. <laughs> we then have Dragons at Crumbling Castle by Terry Pratchett. Always wanted to be more Terry Pratchett. Love dragons. Stephen King, Hearts in Atlantis and Stephen King, End of Watch. Um, we don't have Mr. Mercedes or Finders Keepers yet, I don't think. We might have Finders Keepers, but we eventually want to read all of Stephen King's novels, so we grab them as we see them if we don't already own them. And last but not least for £1.50, we have The Last Chance Hotel by Nikki Thornton. This one sounds really interesting because it's an orphaned boy who works in a kitchen and a kindly professor, doctor, comes along um, and then he gets accused of poisoning him and there's like a murder mystery, uh, but it's also a middle grade and there's a cat and we like cats and it just sounded like the kind of book I'd love. I normally enjoy chicken house books, so we, we bought it. Yeah, th there's nothing else to really say about that, is there? We bought it. I also recognise the name Nikki Thornton. I don't know why. Maybe she's written something else. But I definitely recognise the name. Also for £1.50 that I missed was The Rabbit Problem by Emily Gravitt. This is a picture book, but it's designed so it's like a calendar. So you pin it up and then you have all the different things going on with these bunnies and lots of pop-ups and extra bits and it it's a lot of fun. Sophia's already obsessed with it. We're not letting Ezra anywhere near it in case he rips it, but we already really liked Emily Gravett, so had to grab this one. We then move on to books that cost us £2 each. We have Wagamama's Ways with Noodles by Hugo Arnold. Noodles are one of my favourite foods, and we even call Sophia Noodle as a nickname, so... Yeah. Middle March by George Eliot in the gorgeous Clothbound Classic edition. I'm so excited to get a hold of this one. Um, this is my fifth Clothbound Classic and there might be another one coming later in this video. Um, I want to eventually collect all of these but they cost way too much full price. I think they're like £20 each. Um, but so far I think the most I've spent on one is, you're, you're going to find out that shortly so we won't spoil that yet. But I've got these for a remarkably reasonable price and I want to read Middle March eventually. I want to read all the classics eventually. Uh, it'll be easier to do them if I had them in these beautiful editions. We then have Plain Bad Heroines by Emily A. Danforth. I will be honest, um, I've heard books with Lala talk about this. Ah, oh, there was somebody last night who I followed who was new, who was reading this. Let me see if I can find her channel quickly because we were talking about it on her channel and I want to recommend her if I can. Runs to YouTube. Quick little comment break. Summerlin. So I will link her channel. I think it is just Summerlin. Yes, it's Summerlin. New videos irregularly. <laughs> I love that. Um, but yes, Summerlin is currently reading this and we were having a discussion about it because the US cover is really different to this one. It's like black and red and it looks really gothic. This just grabbed me. Bright yellow with neon pink and a big old wasp. I didn't know what it was about, but I saw the spine. I'm buying that. And it was sat next to Middle March, so then I was buying that too. And then we walked over and got the Song of Shannara as well, because I'd already left that, because I was like, I don't know if Sean's really interested in it. I'm like, well, if I'm already buying some, might as well grab some more. Um, lesbians and wasps. All I know about this one, all I need to know about this one. Full of lesbians and wasps. Disturbing and funny and totally addictive. If that isn't the best review for anything you've ever seen, I, I'm never going to live up to that. Literally just full of lesbians and wasps. That's all you need. But it's big. It is very big, so I don't know when I'm going to get to reading it, but I want to. And also this was released in 2021. Why was it in a charity shop for £2? I don't know, but I'm going to take advantage of that. And last but not least for our £2 books, we have False Value by Ben Aronovich. Signed. So when I said earlier that like we bought Lies Sleeping and we eventually want to catch up with this series, we now have a signed hardcover of the one that follows Lies Sleeping. I don't know why this is only £2. I don't know why anybody would donate this, but I'm here for it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's also got bonus content exclusive to Waterstones and it doesn't have anything funky under the dust jacket, which is a shame, but it's like foily. It's nice. It's nice. So we've just broken £50. I'm already on 113 books. I'm happy with that. And this is where we begin cheating a tiny little bit. Please don't be mad at us. <laughs> so the next stack of books, technically two pound, but they were free and you could put a donation in. So we put a two pound donation in for all of these. So I don't know if I should have like, 
divided the amount that we donated based off of the amount of books to work out how much each one of them individually cost but that was too much maths so for two pound we got magic hats eight fabulous feline fantasies it looks campy af and it has short stories about magical cats featuring stephen king and Curse ursula k le guin heard good things about both of those authors i mean i already enjoy stephen king's writing but magical cats had to get it. A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Forge. Uh, this is technically five books in one, we're only counting it as one book though. Um, Sean's stepdad is really really into Paddington and he's gotten Ezra quite a few Paddington things. So we thought Ezra will probably like Paddington when he gets older and it was a good opportunity to get the collection of five books for a two pound donation. And we have by Kate Toms, all of these by Kate Toms, 10 Little Penguins, There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly, Hey Diddle Diddle, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, Lullabies, The Wheels on the Bus, Go Round and Round, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and There Was an Old Woman Who Lived in a Shoe. So, Sean was only going to get a couple of them, but because they were all the same set, and the babies, like Ezra was already reading one of them, he was in his sling and he was already like picking it up and reading it, so we thought we would get them all. We were just going to do a one pound donation because we'd only got four books but then we doubled it because we got more books um but again like they were technically free it was like an optional donation so we put in as much as we could and yeah so that puts us up on 123 books for 52 pound and 10 pence let's carry on <laughs> two pound 50 each insomnia by stephen king and four past midnight by stephen king again we collect king we don't have either of these the cover for four past midnight is so bloody creepy that i was tempted not to pick it up but it's also in like brand new condition so i'm guessing somebody else found it really creepy and didn't want to pick it up and i'm not quite sure why insomnia is humongous but sean was really interested in reading this one like he already knew stuff about this one beforehand so we we grabbed it we then have our next cheaty box 34 thomas the tank engine books for three pound 99 they have prices on the back of them, they were meant to £1.25 each, so I'm guessing they tried to sell them individually and couldn't sell them, so they decided to sell them as a selection. We do have a few in here that are doubles, so I think we've got three copies of Snowy Tracks, but the way that the baby's minds work, they just fixate on one book, and they want to read that over and over and over again, and then it will fall apart and we'll have to try and repair it. This way we can keep two in the kitchen, and then when one gets destroyed we can take it to hospital and then it can come back completely brand new. So deceive your children with nice books um so i'm not going to work out exactly how many there are based off of the duplicates but technically 34 books for 3.99 159 books 61 pound and 9p good we then have my other cloth pound classic um this was 4.99 so this was a bit more expensive but it's alice in wonderland and this is my favorite of all of the cloth pound classics looking at them as a whole set this is the one that I would buy full price. I love flamingos, I love Alice in Wonderland, I just always wanted this one and I've been tempted to get it full price before but it's hard to justify it. Full price for this one would have been £15. For a book that I've already got a couple of copies of, that's not justifiable to me. £5, however, is apparently justifiable to me. Um, I will be honest, I did kind of wince when I got it down from the shelf because I was expecting it to be 2 or £3 because all of the books in that prospect, like the highest they normally go. Like this is where I got the signed Ben Aronovich from. So normally the highest they go is like two pound, three pound. Um, I've gotten other Clothbone classics there before for like two pound fifty, but because it was this one, I had to. I don't know if it had been middle March, if it had been the other way around. Let's be honest, I probably would have justified it anyway because I do really, really love these editions and I want to have as many as possible. And I have six now, and I think all together are probably about spent the price of this one that I would have bought full price anyway so it's fine we then have a book that I bought full price surprisingly I still do that even when we're getting this many for so cheap and that is the yearbook by Holly Bourne and this is the special edition with the sprayed edges because as I said earlier when I was talking about flawed I love Holly Bourne and this is also signed so I can add this to my collection of signed Holly Bourne books because I've met her and she's lovely and she signed my books and I love her. And now I have the yearbook. 
I was like, oh, I haven't read this yet. I should have read this already. I should have probably tried to get this onto my June TBR. I'm not quite sure why I didn't. Probably because it was buried at the bottom of the stacks and stacks that I acquired this month. But I did also get a special envelope because I pre-ordered, obviously. And I got this little pin badge as a pre-order incentive. And it's so cute. It's just a little yearbook pin and it's just lovely um not many uk publishers do things for uk YA authors like pre-order incentives so it's just nice to see that hollyborn is getting that support i don't i don't want to ruin it oh no i'm ruining it i shouldn't have got it out of its little packet it's fine put it back in its little packet but it's really nice to see hollyborn getting that level of support because she is a really really big author in the uk um I'm not sure how much her novels have sold overseas. I think the only one that's currently had a deal overseas is it only happens in the movies. But she's a really big deal here. So it's nice to see those authors getting that support from their publishers. We then have another little cheaty stack. Um, so all of these books were from the same place on the Jumble Trail. Again, you could put a donation in. And we got that many that we put a donation of £10 in. So technically £10 for all of these books. But I don't know how much they would have cost each but they're all baby books, so we're gonna run through these extra sextra quickly. Extra sextra, what kind of phrase is that? Oh my God, my brain is literally melting, I'm so sorry. So you have Pup Pup and Away, a Paw Patrol story. Meet the Engines, Thomas and Friends. Maisie Goes Camping by Lucy Cousins. Thomas and the Naughty Trick. Thomas One, Two, Three. Thomas Comes to Breakfast and, oh. Oh, oh that's, that's a different language, Boko the Diesel. Um, Thomas Comes to Breakfast and Henry and the Flagpole. We then have 13 Phonics Readers books from the same place, which are Goose on the Loose, Frog on a Log, Fat Cat on a Mat, Toad Makes a Road, Big Pig on a Dig, Ted in a Red Bed, Hen's Pens, Mouse Moves Home, Ted's Shed, Tractor in Trouble, Fox on a Box, Sam Sheep Can't Sleep, and Shark in the Park. We then have some Peppa Pig books. George and the Noisy Baby, Grumpy Rabbit in Space, George's Balloon, Peppa Plays Basketball, Stars, The Children's Fate, George's New Dinosaur, Peppa Goes on Holiday, Peppa Plays Football, and Peppa Meets the Queen. I think we started on Peppa Goes Skiing. Did we start on George and the Noisy Baby? Either way, Peppa Books. And last but not least, from that same £10 donation, we got 112 Mr. Men books by Roger Hargreaves. So now you can see how this is a 320 book book haul because we got 142 books for a one ten pound donation. And they were free. They were like, yeah, if you want to give anything, just like put some money through the front door. Just take them for free. We don't want any money. Um, but we decided to give 10 pound. So 142 books for 10 pound. We are not going to run through all of these with you. We have the Complete Little Miss collection. We have Mr. Men, the Complete Collection, but we're missing Mr. Strong and Mr. Grumpy. And then we've got like a handful of books in the bottom box there. It's like 100 and 112 in total. And then we also had the other books that we got from here, which was another 30. So, we're now on 303 books. And we've only spent £84.7p. The bad thing is I know what's coming. It's gonna get worse. Let's do some more full price books that we got. Because as you can tell, this is 320 books. We don't have many left now. Thank you for sticking with us. I got War Storm by Victoria Aveyard. This is signed. Um, I was really enjoying King's Cage, so I found this on eBay, and it ended up being £13, so it was one penny more than it would have been if I'd bought it full price at the time, and if I had known that they were doing signed hardbacks, I would have ordered it at the time. Um, this is the last book in the Red Queen series, I've read the first three, now I get to carry on with the last one. I did already haul it on Kindle at some point. I haven't included my Kindle books in this total, oh no, there's more for you. Oh no, I will work those Kindle books out at the end. Oh, oh god, okay, it's more than 320 books. It's more. But yes, War Storm. We then have the Skullduggery Pleasant Grimoire by Derek Landy. This is, again, 
signed. Um, this is a companion novel that goes along with the Skullduggery Pleasant series. Sean wanted it. I haven't read any of them yet. He's read and enjoyed quite a lot of them. So we have this signed limited edition, which is cool. And that was $14.99. We then have two more full priced editions from Waterstones. Have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. This is also signed. Um, this is the first book in the Realm Breaker series, I think. Um, there's definitely more than one book. I don't know if it's a duology or a trilogy or just a series. Um, but it had sprayed edges and it was signed and I like Victoria Aveyard's writing. So once I've read Warstorm, I'll move on to Realm Breaker. And that one was £16.99. And also for £16.99 and a surprise twist because this was meant to be £20 but they price match if they do a deal on the book before it's released so I ordered this for £20 but ended up paying £16.99 so thank you Waterstones. Um, that's Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir and this is also signed. I kind of got this as a gift for Sean but I also got it for myself. I've heard good things about The Martian, I haven't read it yet. Um, I've got somewhere Arma Artemis, I was going to say Armada but that's the Ernest Klein book, Artemis. So I will read these eventually um but sean really likes him and as i said sean likes spaces so this is mostly for him now i need to look at my notes i got too many books <laughs> too many books for my brain not going to do the thing which is counting so the next couple of books are in a subscription box well the next few are all subscription box i can't work them out without the shipping because i'm just going based off of the price that i paid for the whole thing so these would be slightly less but i'm charging it as like the cost for the whole box. Um, so I have the three books from Curiosity. Unfortunately I can't find The Rock From The Sky by John Cresson. We've been reading it so much and I've got a feeling we might have left it over at my parents house because the babies have been taking it basically everywhere with us. But that one's adorable so I might have to do a full review of that one at some point just so I can show it off because we've been looking for it all morning and we haven't found it. But the other two books in this month's Curiosity were Charlie Chooses by Lou Peacock and Nicholas Slater which again we have read this over and over again. I highly recommend this picture book and The Best Worst Day Ever by Sophie Hen um, and these three all together were £22.80 including the shipping. We then have The Prison Healer by Lynette Nonny. This was from Fairy Loot and all together including shipping my Fairy Loot box was £31.52p and this has the sprayed and stenciled edges, it has the signed book plate and it has the under the dust jacket foiling and the under the dust jacket artwork. Um, I will link for you our book box battle video because we unboxed this and the next two books that I'm about to mention in more depth over there. So for £33.55, again including shipping and VAT and everything, was In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. Um, this is the Illumicrate Special Edition with the stenciled flowery edges and it is not signed yet. The book plate is coming in next month's box so I can't show you that off. But think it has something under the dust jacket? No it doesn't, I'm lying to you. You can just, just show you the spine. Um, again, I'm halfway through this one at the moment and enjoying it so far, hoping to finish this off sooner rather than later and I will be starting Prison Healer later so I am actively reading these books, I'm not just acquiring them and putting them on my shelves. And for £42.40 because it is an American book box, I have Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart and this is the Alcrate edition. I was trying to say by Alcrate from Alcrate by Shannon Smart. Um, this is her debut novel and this is the first book in a duology. I actually didn't enjoy it which breaks my heart to say because this was one of my most anticipated novels of 2021 and this one is signed somewhere, I've still got my bookmark in here, signed and it has the under the dust jacket floating with the tree. Again I'll link Bookbox Battle if you want to have a better look at this one um, but sadly this one wasn't what I was expecting it to be, which was a bit of a shame. I've now lost count of how many books are on, <laughs> but I've still got the money taken out and Sean will be doing the books down in the corner. Hopefully it will still add up to 320. I will do some counting. I've just recounted for you and I've got a feeling it's actually 315 books. Um, I don't know if I like double counted some earlier. I thought I'd got it to 320 and now I'm counting again and again and it keeps going to 315. So we'll go with 315, but then also we've got some books on the Kindle. So probably still 320 but let's continue onwards. So the next three books together came to £68.35 and that is three Owlcrate editions. I have had to work this out by taking my entire Owlcrate order and subtracting the cost of the fourth book that isn't here yet because that was a pre-order. 
and then doing the current exchange rate so this might be a bit off but close enough and those three are Mr Impossible by Maggie Steve Falter which they are kindly sending me a replacement of as my dust jacket is like split and that is such a shame because like it's Maggie's artwork on the dust jacket so that's kind of the point of the special edition but they are sending me a new copy so that's really really sweet of them and that is signed but this will be going to my best friend who also loves Maggie Steve Falter all the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace, which is signed and has these really cool, like wavy edges. And Bone Cryer Storm by Catherine Purdy, which again is somewhere in here, signed and it has the cool sprayed edges as well and will look really nice with my copy of Bone Cryer's Moon. At 81.95 we have my Infernal Devices the Lumicrate set so again that's including the VAT and shipping in that price they were £70 before that um, but that's Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess I will link for you up in the cards the unboxing I did of these I don't want to get them out in case I ruin them um, but they have like different like jacket foiling and they are all stamp signed by Cassandra Clare so they're really very very cool actually I will get one out because I want to show you the edges because the edges are beautiful they're like stenciled like cogs very steampunk so it's the the block colour on the top matches the um, hard cover and then also the stenciled cogs but yes I will link that if you're interested in seeing those more in depth and then last but not least to my shame I let the flippers get my money just had to change my light battery so I'm sorry if the lighting is different but we're getting on to our last two books and I'm going to show them off before I tell you how much I spent on them because you're going to be embarrassed and I am embarrassed and I shouldn't have done it but I wanted to do it and I did it and it's too late now it's not like I can return them because it was on eBay so I would like to formally welcome to the bumbling blogger family Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, the Illumicrate Spray Gold Edges hardcover, which is signed. And the Muse of Nightmares Illumicrate Special Sprayed Edges Edition, which is also signed. I should have ordered these when a Lumicrate announced them and I didn't and I've regretted that ever since and I've looked at them on eBay multiple times and they were selling for five or six hundred at one point and five or six hundred was too much for me at that point but this month I have been made redundant so that's probably another reason that we're buying so many books because I'm kind of like comfort eating but with books um 500 pair was still too much really like, logically 500 pair would have been too much but I said to Sean that there was this set on eBay and was I allowed to go up to 500 pound for them if the buyer wanted me to because we were doing that thing when you can like put an offer in and Sean said yes 500 pound was okay so we were fully prepared to pay 500 pound for two books and we didn't because the buyer accepted an offer for 300 which is still too much for two books and I'm fully aware of that please don't judge me um we're very very privileged we have a lot of savings built up our bills are very low we own our house so we don't have to worry about rent and things and we're normally on a normal month we'd be sensible with money but we had more money than we knew what to do with because of the redundancy we've put more of it than we've spent into our savings a lot more than we've spent into our savings so it's okay to treat yourself occasionally especially when it's something that you've really really wanted for a very long time and Sean and I read Strange the Dreamer together last month and he realised how much he loves it as well if it had just been me I probably wouldn't have been able to justify it but Sean really loves it too and he said I want you to get these special editions and I wanted to get them and honestly 300 pounds was too much but it's the best money I've ever spent and we've saved so much because we haven't been going to concerts and we've hardly been buying anything because the charity shops have been closed and as you can tell like we got so many of these books free 
But that does mean that all together in May, we spent £726.64 pence on books. Physical books. I haven't even looked at my Kindle yet. I will do that for you in just a second. And I'll be honest, less than I thought it was going to be. Kind of expected four figures because the Inferno Devices set we ordered a few months ago. So that's finally arrived, but we ordered that a few months ago. Um, obviously the, the, the Waterstones ones, they take the money when the pre-order is delivered. So we've spent all of that this month. But it's like an extra £80 that's not actually technically included in this month spending because we'd already spent that before so that's kind of okay um i don't know what to take away from this video i'm disappointed in myself because it's a lot of books like a lot whether it's 315 or 320 it's still over 300 and that is too many and we don't have enough space for them so we're gonna have to do a big unhaul soon we're gonna have to do a big unhaul soon but a lot of them are for the babies that's good parenting babies love books we're not buying them sweets we're not buying them junk food we're not buying them toys we are buying them toys as well just not as many but we're getting them books and they love these books they'll tear them apart and they will be ruined within a month but they love them and isn't that the best way to educate your children like let them love books so i'm not disappointed in us for that it's just a lot. It's just like that everywhere I look there are more books. And it's gonna be fun trying to take a thumbnail with these. I am determined that we're gonna not not necessarily like a book buying ban. Um I'm still gonna get my special editions. I'm still gonna get like my book boxes. I'm not gonna cancel my book boxes just because we got a lot of books this month. So we will still be having like a few books coming in but I'm going to try not to order anywhere near as many and I'm going to try to stop going around the charity shops and go to the free book box because like other people will enjoy those books, they're not going to waste, it's not like they're getting recycled and we only have like that chance to get them. So I'm going to try to be more strict with myself next month but in all honesty like 720 quid for over 300 books, that's like less than £3 a book. That's just over, like one pound a book. No, just over, just over two pound a book. Like two, two pound fifty a book. Gotta do some maths. Two pound twenty seven a book. Damn, son. That's actually pretty good when you think of it like that. Because all of these books are gonna have a recommended retail price of like at least seven pounds. So we've technically saved like five pound a book, and we've got all our fancy editions. But I'm still going to try and be better next month. And now I will briefly pause this video while I work out what the heck I got on my Kindle this month. Because, oh my god, how did I forget that my Kindle existed? Ah! Uh... <laughs> but that doesn't count in the money because this is like how much we spent on physical books. Kindle books are like non-corporeal. They exist in our minds and not physically. So they're fine. They don't count as money. It's okay. We're not counting anymore, we're not counting anymore, we're not doing any more math. Okay, so we also got 13 books on the Kindle. I'll just run through those for you very, very quickly. So you've got Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the Stormlight Archive series. These have been released, um, reduced to 99p on the Daily Deal for the last few months. So this is the, the third one in the series that we needed. Legendary by Stephanie Garber, again, 99 pence. This is the second book in the Caraval trilogy. I own the first one physically. I have the third one on my Kindle. Now I have the second one on my Kindle. I can actually read the series. Shawfall by Robert Jackson Bennett, again 99p and that was the second book in the Foundry Side series. I read it and I gave it four and a half or five stars, I can't quite remember. Um, I would happily reread them and I didn't get Foundry Side when it was on 99p Daily Deal because I didn't know I'd love it and I regret not getting that. So now I've got the second one. If the first one comes on Diggle again, I will get that and then we can reread them that way because the UK covers are not pretty. I Know You Did It by Sue Woolman. This is Sue Woolman's newest novel. I pre-ordered this the day before it came out because it was randomly reduced to £1.69 despite the fact that it was coming out the next day. YA thriller UK. I like her other book. I've only read one of them but I like her other book. 
Chronicles of Ancient Darkness by Michelle Paver. This was 99p for six books. This is the first six books in the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series. Starts with Wolf Brother. I cannot be bothered to find out the titles of the other six for you. I will see if Sean can put like a graphic up on the screen. Uh, six books are 99p and I already own the first one so I'll be unhauling that to read them this way. Space Saver. Another really weird one that they reduced to £1.69 the day before it came out was Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. I didn't know how long it would take my Owl Crate version to get here. I thought I was going to be able to read it as soon as it came out because I didn't know I was going to get into a slump. So I pre-ordered this the day before it came out and still haven't started it. So, but that's fine because now I don't have to read my signed edition. Um, and I also got Call Down the Hawk for £1.40. So that's £2.09p for the first two books in the series and I can reread them whenever I want without worrying about the babies ruining the hardcovers. So I'll probably reread Call Down the Hawk digitally before I move on to Mr. Impossible. And last but not least, we have Bacchanal by Veronica E. Henry. This is like black girl at a carnival and sounds really interesting. Uh, Amazon do a thing called First Reads where you can read a book that's out the next month if you buy it for 99p the month before. So I bought it for 99p last month and I will eventually read it. I hope, maybe, possibly. But also, that puts us over 320 books, even if it wasn't 320 books. We need to math. But that means I wasn't, it wasn't false advertising. It's still well over 300. And that's like a year and a half reading for me. But also most of these are baby books. So that's like maybe like a year's reading if I read nothing else. So it's, they'll probably get read. They'll probably, probably, possibly get read, maybe. But they're in our house anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed how embarrassing this video was. I'm sorry that I got all hot and sweaty and I'm sorry that I got too many books this month. I hope that you enjoyed this video because it has taken me an hour and a half to film it and it's still not over because we've got to recount and then Sean's got to bloody edit it. I am so sorry, Sean. This is going to be a nightmare for you. But anyway, if you liked this video, give it a like. If you'd like to call us out for spending too much money on books, then feel free to do it, but we'll probably feel as guilty as we already do. Don't make us feel worse. If you've read any of these books and you would recommend us picking them up sooner rather than later, please let us know. Um, yeah, subscribe if you'd like to. We do a haul monthly. I said last month that they're not normally as big as they were. Apparently they just keep getting bigger. Can we beat 300 books next month? No. No, we can't. Don't even tempt us into doing that. It's not happening. But will we haul less books in June? Hopefully. Stick around and you will be able to find out. We're going to haul less books in June. There's no physical way. Especially because like we had two jumble trails in one month. And next month we have no jumble trails. So it's fine. The temptation is already gone. There is no chance of us hauling anywhere near. Like we, we might not even get to double figures next month. That. That would be good. It would be nice to haul less than 10 books. It would be much shorter than filming for an hour and a half. But anyway, we hope that you enjoyed this video. We post new ones every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So come back and hang out with us some more. I might even continue to stand up because normally I sit down. But I'm quite liking the freedom of swizzling. So I'm going to go count some books and feel embarrassed about how much we've spent. Possibly have a drink and some food because it's very hot. And I probably should have taken a break from filming at some point. But I didn't. So appreciate my commitment. <laughs> I've got a drink right there. I just noticed Sean put a drink right by my feet. And I really just noticed it. Kill me. But anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> Should have sorted these into more specific piles before I started filming. I thought just having a general free stack would be adequate. It's not. So that is. Nine, ten. The shot. <sighs> it's so hot. Why did I have to film this on like the hottest day of the year so far? <laughs> oh my god, I can't even have my fan on because of the sound. Oh. <laughs> this is why it's like tank top, skirt, gonna get sweaty for you. <laughs> Oh my god, thank god it's over, thank god. 
Yay!